In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Form 7, which can be found at form7.codeplex.com, to convert a um, formal Word document into a form in SharePoint where the input and the output of the form look just like the Word document. I know there's a lot of needs for users being comfortable filling out those official looking forms that they want both the input and output experience to be the same. Uh, and to show you how this works, I'm going to take this a uh, Word document you see here on this web page uh, is for something called a monitoring system certification and I'm going to download the Word version of that file. So if my internet will cooperate here, <clears throat> let's click on it to download it and we're waiting. We're going to save this locally and we're waiting. Wow, I hope it doesn't take 10 minutes. Somebody forgot to feed the hamster in the wheel. So I'll pause this document, pause this video while it uh, um, finishes downloading. We'll be right back. All right, so finally the document finished downloading, and let's open up that Word document. And you can see here a Word document that the person would fill out that they're comfortable filling out that they filled out many times before. And we want to use this document as a web page. Now we could manually create this from scratch as a web page, but that would take a long time. Uh, luckily in Word, you can just save a document as a web page. Now granted, it doesn't create the prettiest HTML in the world, but it will get us there, and especially for purposes of getting going quickly. So we're gonna save this document as a web page filtered and save it. And that is going to create for us an HTML version of this page, which will look the same as the Word document. Now that's done, it got saved for us. There's the file right there. And we're going to upload this doc, this file now to a SharePoint document library so we can get it into SharePoint. So I'm going to open up our page in SharePoint Designer. You could just upload it directly from the UI if you wanted to, but I'll do it from SharePoint Designer. In our site assets document library, I'm going to upload that file. So add a file, our HTM file we created, and open it up. We can see here it got loaded, so let's open it up to edit it now. So here in our split view, you can see the source HTML, and you can see the actual form itself. And you can see it looks very much just like the Word document. What we need to do, though, is we need to put in uh, input text boxes so people can actually input data into this form online. And that's as simple as clicking on the form where we need to put the input box, and then coming up to the code here and putting in an input box. And you can use any HTML editor for this, okay? I'm using SharePoint Designer. Whatever HTML editor you want to do, you can. This is just HTML for an input box. Input, type equals text, and we need to give it an ID. And the only important thing about, well not only important thing, but the most important thing about this Form 7 is that each checkbox, each field has to have a unique ID. And that's how Form 7 knows how to populate and store the data. So we're going to give this field an ID of facility name because that's what the field is. You can see here there's a form. We can now stretch it out, make it bigger if we want. So let's go ahead and make it a little bit bigger. And let's do the same thing for address. But to make our life easier, let's just copy and paste this. So we're going to copy this, click on the site address, and come in here and paste it. And this is going to be site address. I don't think you want our fifth width that much. We'll start out with 100 pixels and see what that looks like. So we can make this wider now if we want. And so you, you can just go through the form and put input boxes in for all the different fields. Granted, for longer fields, this may take a little bit of time. Also, with Form 7, you, could do, you, get, you do get validation as well if you want to add validation. We could validate that they entered a correct date. We could validate that the phone number they entered is a valid phone number. So you could do some additional tying to get some data validation to stop people from entering bad data. So you'd go through and fill out all your forms. Let's go through and do a couple of check boxes too. So for this intake box, let's find out where in the HTML that is. And it's right here. So here I want to put in an input type equals checkbox. And again, it needs a unique ID. And we will call this intake GP and we'll give it a value of yes, just so it has a value field. 
and that should give us our checkbox. And you see there's a checkbox there. So let's do the same thing for the annular space. So click on that annular space here in the code. I'm going to just paste that checkbox and give it a new ID annular space and we'll do it for one more. Let's also do it for the piping sump. And give it a unique name, a unique ID I mean, which is going to be called pumping piping sump. All right, so no big deal. Using any HTML editor, just go in there and put your check boxes and text boxes in there. And then we're going to save the document back into the document library. Uh, one last thing we do need to do uh, for this form is this we have to tell Form 7 that this is a form that you will be storing. And to do that, uh, we just need to add, give it an ID. So I'm going to find the, the div container for this form, and I'm just going to give it an ID equal to sample form. Okay? This little piece here, you'll notice, uh, it's just saying, hey, I need to find this form. I need to find a form called sample form. And we have a corresponding script that goes with this form. I'm going to show you here. It's called Form 7. It's just a little tiny script. And you can see here it's looking for that sample form. And that's so when you submit the form, it knows which form you're submitting. And when you read the form, when the file page opens, it knows which form which form you're actually looking for. So theoretically you could have multiple forms on a page if you wanted to, but this one is just one sample form. So we've got these two files. We have the HTML file which we created from a Word document, put in those inputs, and we have a piece of script that goes along with it that tells it how to load the form and how to save the form. And you don't even need to, you don't need to change this for the purposes of this uh, example at all. Just as the default, form, the default script. So now let's go into SharePoint and let's create a page that has our form. We're going to all site content. We'll create a page. And again, I guess I should point out that this library will actually work in SharePoint 2007, 2010, and 2013. And it also works in uh, Office 365. So you can go to the cloud with this as well. And I believe the name of the form was is the UN-036. We'll create that form. And now we need to add the parts of that form onto this page we created. So first, we're going to add a media media and content content editor and we are going to add our form so let's edit this web part and tell it that you need to be displaying the contents from our form which we stored in the site assets document library and it had the name un-036.htm let's apply that you can see there's our form on the page and now we need to tell it that hey this is actually a form you need to load and store from SharePoint and to do that we're going to add another web part Again, it's a content editor web part. And we are going to tell it to link to that Form 7 file that we have. And that is going to be in, also in our site assets. That's forms7.js. And we'll apply that. And there's we get a little submit button that goes along with it. And I, I want to get rid of that title. So let's get rid of that title just the cosmetic what I'm doing with this button here and we'll stop editing so now you see here we have our form our form has actual input boxes that you can enter it's got check boxes you can check and you're in SharePoint if we do a print preview of this form if you this is how it look if you print it out you can see that it still looks like that form so you get input that looks like the form and output that looks like the form now let's make sure the form actually state, stores data. So let's put in some information. I'm going to put in Summit 7 Systems, and I'm going to give it a site address of 300 Voyager Way. Uh, and let's say that we want to choose just the annular space or vault and piping sump trench sensors. So you'd go through and fill out all of your form, and then you'd hit the Submit button. And if this works, it should say, hey, it submitted successfully. Um, and give us a default message. So it says the save was successful and it has an ID of 41. So how do we know it actually worked? Well I can come up here and say well the ID for the form was 41 where I'm going to delete this from the form and it should show us as an, an empty form when it loads back up. Okay, empty form. Now let's put 41 back up there and load it again. It should load from the SharePoint list. And there, and now it's loading the data from the SharePoint list. And you saw how fast it loaded. So we've, just in a few minutes, Took a Word document, taken a Word document, turned it into a web page that looks like the document, can fill it out, can read from it uh, with little effort.
So from here, we can add some automation to this process. We can enhance it. Um, and we could even convert some info path forms to do the same sort of thing. So you've got a lot of options on how you want to use this. But hey, if this gets your ideas going on what you want to do, if you want to see something different, let me know. Thanks.